If you set a timer, every time you start kneading for eight to 10 minutes and finish when it beeps, then you never have to worry if your bread dough is ready. That's one tiny habit that will massively improve your bread making. Roll it! Hey, home bakers. Often it's the small things that make a big difference in bread making. That is literally why this channel exists. If you get into the habit of doing these few things, each and every time you bake, you'll be laughing all the way to a homemade sandwich. What? You'll have seen me in the past, weighing out all my ingredients into the same bowl in an attempt to save on washing up. And it works, but it's risky. It's reckless, it's fraught with danger. It's open to making mistakes along the way. Quite frankly, it's irresponsible. Recently, I've been filming a lot of recipes for the brand new Coming Soon Home Bakers Club. Link in the description box below. For this, I've been pre-weighing my ingredients individually because it's important that I get it right for you. And you know what? I'm a convert. In seeing everything in front of you before you begin, you can be confident that you've got everything and check it off before you go. And not only that, but if you forget something, like the salt, for example, and we've all been there, you'll see it on the tray. You'll go, oh, look, there's the salt. And when you are weighing, checking twice helps clear the mind of worry. If 50% of the bread making process is the actual bread and the other 50% is the pleasure that comes in the process, well then let's make the process pleasurable and remove all the worry and the stress. Like, hold on a minute, this, this looks too wet to me. It's the doubt that comes after you've mixed stuff up when you start kneading. Is this too dry? Did I do this right? Have I left something out? Oh my gosh, Did I was I fully present when I weighed all that stuff? Maybe I accidentally weighed 400 grams of flour instead of 500. We don't make bread to make stress do we? So remove some of it by just double checking your ingredients. Pre-weigh your ingredients, that's the first point, and double check them all as well, that's the second point, and if you're converting stuff, use your best friend for help. Even if you're converting a single loaf recipe to make two loaves, which is quite an easy calculation, Use your pencil and write it down as you go. It's easy, you might be thinking, to double four or five ingredients in your head. <laughs> Child's play. But when I do, inevitably, something takes my attention for a moment. Like, oh, I must remember to water that plant later, and then I might forget to double the yeast. And then I'll be looking at my dough thinking, why didn't you puff up? Make a list and write it down next to your original list and cross off your old list so you're only looking at one list of numbers or even better, write on a post-it note. Writing down a list of stuff that you've converted is something we've been doing in class forever because it just makes sense. We've mentioned this already, and setting a timer for your kneading works in your favor on many, many levels. Firstly, they help you know how long you've been kneading for and how long's left, and that might sound so obvious, but without one, you might get to the four, four minute mark and go, oh yeah, that feels all right. I've probably done about eight minutes by now, haven't I? I, in these moments, easily overestimate my ability to exactly time eight minutes in my head. Especially when I'm in those moments where kneading feels like a chore, where I've got hundreds of other things to do that day, and I'll just be like, you know what, that's enough. It's probably eight minutes, let's move on. And then my bread dough won't puff properly, and I wonder why. Also, going by feel comes at a cost, especially for beginners. Knead until words like soft, springy, smooth, elastic dough is always written into bread recipes apart from mine. So then you are left with your own instincts trying to judge the readiness of your bread dough with nothing to go by. All these words are subjective, but you know what isn't subjective? Knead your dough for eight minutes. That's not a subjective, is it? Settle any worries that may come from trusting your own judgment, especially if you're a beginner, and just set a timer when you're kneading. All ovens are different, so get to know yours, take it out for dinner, learn its nuances, its particularities. Listen to what it is telling you. I'd like it if you could say, my oven always um, bakes hotter in the back left corner. Or, my oven is quite ferocious. I always turn it down 10 degrees less than what's stated in Jack's recipe, and that's what works for me. And how do you get to that stage? You observe your bread while it's baking. Don't just pop it in the oven for 40 minutes, because that's what it says, and then go and Sit down, have a cup of tea, and come back again when you smell burning. Set for 10 minutes, set for 20 minutes, 
30 minutes and have a peep along the way. See how things are getting on. You can open the oven door. After that initial steam factor has happened on the first 10 minutes or so, it's fine. If you feel the need to open the door and have a peep and see if the back is coloring up a little bit more than the front and switch things around, you can do that. In class, we set 10 minute burn warnings and go and have a peep and rearrange stuff because we've got loads of stuff in the oven at once and it's important that everyone goes home pleased and delighted with the bread that they baked. Not someone with one that's scorched on the edge and another one that looks soft and pasty. You know, observe your bread while it's baking. You'd have heard me say this hundreds of times by now, so skip it if you've already heard it, but it's really, really important that we do not dust your dough while you're kneading. Knead your dough with zero flour, period. Or if you're in the UK, full stop. Doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? When I'm asked when people are passing me in the street, oh, you're the bread guy, aren't you? Why won't my bread dough puff up? Why is it always dense and heavy? I asked the question, are you dusting your dough when you're kneading it? And 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, they say, well, yeah, obviously. Resist with all your might. Resist, even though your fingers get sticky and feel kind of gross. Resist when it's sticking onto your table. Resist, even though it says to do it in your recipe. Incorporating extra flour into your dough at this point repeatedly to stop it from sticking will tighten up your dough, leading you to believe that it's fully worked when it's really not and then it won't puff up properly. The end. Don't do it. Please get yourself a dough scraper from bakewithjack.co.uk. They're only a couple of quid and that will give you the ability to knead with zero flour instead using your scraper to loosen your bread dough along the way. And you'll never reach for that flour pot ever again and your bread will thank you for it, I promise. Just try it, just once. If you know the temperature of your kitchen on the day you're making bread, you are already one step ahead if you know the temperature of my kitchen because it's written on the recipe that i gave you on the day that i made the recipe well then you set yourself up to smash it to pieces in a good way that's a good thing yeast puffs up quicker when it's warmer and slower when it's colder so then if you are following a recipe that i wrote in my kitchen at 21 degrees that's 70 degrees fahrenheit and your kitchen is the same temperature as mine you can expect the puff to happen in exactly the same way as the puff happened in my kitchen as it states in the recipe does this make sense you can follow the recipe and expect the same results as mine. It will puff the same as mine puffed. That's not to say though, that if your kitchen is colder than mine, you can't make bread. It's simply to say that knowing that fact, that your kitchen is colder than mine, you can expect to leave things a little bit longer before you shape and before you bake. You won't be left scratching your head thinking, why won't my dough puff up? Why Jack says it's gonna puff up in an hour, an hour and a half, and what's going on here? Instead, you can replace that feeling with, you know what? It's a little bit colder today. Maybe I've got time to pop to the shop quickly while my dough's puffing up nice and slowly and everything will be okay. Knowing the temperature removes the worry and helps you to understand what might go on in your bread dough today, giving you power and freedom instead. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? And the same goes for knowing your dough temperature too. If your dry ingredients are in your cupboard, well then they are at room temperature, aren't they? Because they're already in the room. Flour, yeast, probably, if it's dry and salt. That means the biggest contributor to your dough's temperature is the water that you put in. That's your doing, that's your power. Match the temperature of the water to temperature of your room and you're laughing. <laughs> Warm doughs dry out and cool over time, leading to the classic, my dough puffed up the first time but didn't puff up the second time scenario. Also, you get a big thick skin on top sometimes. Cold doughs take a while to adjust to room temperature and puff up, leading to the also classic, why isn't my dough puffing up? Is it dead? Did I do this wrong? Is my yeast expired? Scenario, uh, which is also undesirable. There are times where warm doughs and cold doughs have their uses for us as home bakers, but they come with their fair share of complications that have to be considered and compensated for. Sidestep those issues by getting some cold water from the tap popping in enough warm water from your kettle to match your room temperature with a little thermometer, then move on with confidence and measure the actual quantity of the water that's already the correct temperature. Does that make sense? Here's a few more quick ones for you if you are still here. Um, we could go on all day with this, but here's a few. Quick fire round, let's go. Rest your dough on your kitchen side. Airing cupboards, proving drawers, warm places, all come with their fair share of risk. 
They might seem like a good idea at the time, but if the mission is to remove error, then just rest it on the kitchen side like I do. If your kitchen is 20, 21 degrees, well then that's okay. That's 68, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's lower, like 16, 18, well that's all right too. It'll just take a little bit longer, but it is by far the safest way, especially for beginners. Weigh your water on scales. Instead of eyeballing the quantity on the side of a jug, you'd be surprised just how inaccurate the measurements on the side of a jug are. And it's those inaccuracies at that point, which can make a massive effect on the texture and consistency of your bread dough. Write down your observations as you go in a little book. What the dough feels like, is it too wet and tricky to handle? Stuff like that. And then you can adjust it for next time instead of relying on your memory, which never works for me. Write down how your bread was in the end. Did it taste nice? Did it burn in the oven? Did it go flat or rise up a nice shape? What might you change and tweak for next time around? Keep all this in a diary and now you're really learning. Is there anything else, anything you have adopted habitually to make things better, easier, more consistent for you? Something that helps you learn? Share it with us all. Share it with the world in the comments box underneath. It's a journey of learning and understanding and building those all important home baker's instincts, but don't forget along the way to enjoy it and have fun. Thank you to everybody for simply watching this video, for clicking buttons, because that really helps. Thanks to patrons for sticking by me all this time. Supporting me in what I do. Thank you to Super Thanks Droppers. I hope this video has been helpful for you all. Don't forget, the Home Bakers Club is coming soon and go be free. Turn your phone off. Go make some bread. See ya.